Welcome back to this week's edition of the Algerian Football Podcast. Hope everyone is doing good. Hope you've had a great weekend. Hope everyone is doing well. We've got lots of stories to uh, to jump into in today's episode. If you're watching, welcome. Uh, of course, you can also listen on Spotify. Just search Algerian Football Podcast and on the iTunes store as well. If you want to listen to it on the go, on your commute or whenever you like. Maybe when you're about to sleep, who knows? But anyway, we've got lots of topics to get through. We'll start off quickly with the main Algerian team. Um, of course, we expect them to return back to action next month for two fixtures, probably two international friendlies because those AFCON qualifiers have been postponed due to AFCON moving. It looks like we're going to be playing two African teams because the European teams are playing in the Nations League. It's a very small window. It's literally eight days uh, of two matches. Um, so it's going to be a very tight squeeze. Looking like Guinea and Ghana, looks like Guinea and then Ghana, with both games perhaps in Algeria and a sort of a, maybe sort of an opening ceremony sort of style for Baraki, but more probably in Oran, because I think we haven't actually seen the main Algeria team play in Oran yet. Um, so expect maybe a Guinea or a Ghana or both to be playing Algeria in Oran towards the end of September. So that's what you've got to look forward to. And I think that's actually it for Algeria for the rest of the year, unless we get a cheeky game in when the World Cup kicks off, um, a sort of a warm-up game against someone. So that's what it looks like for Algeria. Of course, if we were at the World Cup, there would have been a lot more to look forward to this year. Our warm-up games, our free group games, um, we would have been buzzing, basically, to be looking forward to that, counting down the days, booking trips to Doha and, and Car, I'm sure. But unfortunately, um, well, we, we couldn't hold on to uh, to that 1-1 that one -one in, in Bleeder. But anyway, uh, that's what it looks like for Algeria, Guinea, and Ghana on the horizon. We actually played uh, Ghana first game of this year, didn't we? Beat them three 0 and now they're at the World Cup, and we're not. Let's look back at the weekend's action. We'll start with my team, West Ham United. Played Nottingham Forest away. Unfortunately, we lost one 0 I have to say, we didn't deserve to lose. We should have won the game three four five one. We hit the post twice. We're going to talk about Saeed Ben Rahma here because he started. It was one change. It was Ben Rahma in for Lanzini. And I think Ben Rahma was the best player on the pitch. And I'm not being biased. I think anyone that watched that game, even as a neutral, would admit that Saeed Ben Rahma was the man of that match. First half, the goal. Now, it's, it's a tidy finish. Um, we'll come to the VAR decision in a second. But people are forgetting Saeed picked the ball up. Incredible first touch. Carried the ball about 60, 65 yards. Played a 1-2. Ball falls back to him in the box and he and he delicately finishes it. And it would have been West Ham's first goal of the season. Well, it looked like it was, so I celebrated it. Um, very harsh disallowed goal. I don't think it's a foul by Antonio. I think it's a 50-50 clatter and it's a very harsh decision to disallow that goal. So unlucky for Saeed because he deserved the goal for how he created that, that counter-attack. Um, then we're losing to some fluke. Then we get a penalty again. The confidence of Saeed Demrahma, he should have stepped up and he should have taken that penalty. Now, of course, at West Ham, we've recently had Mark Noble retired. And Mark Noble has pretty much taken all the penalties for the last 10 to 15 years. Declan Rice captain now. I don't know Rice took it. He's missed one last season. I don't know why Rice took the penalty. You think of Demrahma, his performance, his confidence going into that game, should have taken the penalty. And I think he would have scored it. I think Demrahma's um, taken seven and scored seven penalties in his career. I think he's taken penalties for Brentford. Why didn't Saeed take it? I don't know. Dean Henderson, good name, but saved the penalty, unfortunately. Um, and we lost 1-0. And then later on in that game, Saeed Barahma, who, by the way, didn't get substituted by David Moyes, if ever that's a vote of confidence, that shows how well he played. The fact that Moyes finally didn't substitute him. Hits the bar from a free kick, a fantastic free kick. And even though it hit the bar, it bounced down on the line. We had to get the goal line technology out again, and then it was cleared away. So... You know, on another day, Ben Rahma could have had a hat-trick if the VAR goal stood, if the one from the free kick went in, and if he's got to take the penalty, he could have had a hat-trick. And I think West Ham want to keep him now. If we went now and sold our best player from the last game, there'd be a lot of alarm bells ringing. But expect lots of business from West Ham, the likes of Emerson, Vanneken, maybe Payet coming back, and Tilo Kerr at the back. You're going to see a lot of business from us <clears throat> from now until the end of the window, which has less than three weeks um, to go. Now, while we're speaking about Nottingham Forest, they are very close to signing Hussam Awar. Now, how the hell has, has Hussam Awar gone from this Leon prodigy, valued at about 70 million euros, being linked with the likes of Arsenal and Juventus, 
ended up at Nottingham Forest for about 10 to 15 million. I think it's bonkers. And I think when Fakir and, and Awa were bursting through and decided that, oh, we have to play for France to have the best club career, I don't think people are expecting them to end up at Real Betis and Nottingham Forest. That's ridiculous. But the good news from an Algeria perspective is that we know the pressure on, um, well, from Leon, from Orlas, on his Leon players playing for France. Once you take Awar out of that Leon dressing room, that Leon vibe, there's far less pressure on his shoulders to play for the French national team, in my opinion. And I think him at Forest, whilst it is Forest, it is Premier League football. Um, he'll be playing with the likes of Dennis and Lingard and all these sorts of players. I think Awal will be more pushed towards Algeria because he's playing in England. You know, it's not like playing in France when you've got all that pressure. Playing in England, he doesn't have to play for France. He can easily play for Algeria. He hasn't got the pressure from upstairs at Lyon. But I think it's bonkers. And I hope that the future talents, your Shirkies, your Eight Norries of this world, your Adleys, learn from this and realise you don't need to play for the French to, uh, to automatically get a big move. He's going to Nottingham Bloody Forest. I think it's ridiculous, but what a deal that is for Nottingham Forest if they get that over the line. So elsewhere in the Premier League, we saw Mr. Riyad Mahrez start his first Premier League game of the season. Interesting tactical switch. He played on that right-hand side. Phil Foden moved over to the left and Jack Grealish moved to the bench. Unfortunately, Riyad Mahrez didn't pick up an attacking return, although he did get to play the full 90 minutes, which is fantastic for his fitness. But there's a moment in the first half, and I think this has been the story of Mahrez's Man City career. Phil Foden is got to the six-yard box, no defenders. He's got Mahrez and Haaland to square it to, and he's had a shot. And I think that's why Pep Guardiola decides to take him off at half-time. And he got a goal and an assist for and I know. But that sort of decision-making has cost Mahrez so many goals, so many assists. Because if Mahrez is in that situation, he's going to pass it. Foden, look, you've got Riyad there. You've got Haaland there. Just pass to him. What are you doing, mate? It's shocking. It's actually shocking. Because if Mahrez did that and had a shot and he missed, there would have been a lot of people on his case. But when Phil the golden boy Foden does it, oh, it's okay because it's Phil Foden. He's from the academy. I'm sorry. Mahrez was robbed there of a goal. And that's even if Haaland missed it himself. He got in a great position, Morris, to get into that six-yard box. Just pass the ball, mate. And, and Raheem Sterling did it a lot, and that might ultimately be why Pep was happy to let Raheem Sterling go. But um, I have to say, an absolute shambles of a decision to not pass that, and it ultimately got taken off at half-time. Newcastle away next for Manchester City. Um, Hopefully Mahrez plays, but after that they've got Forrest at home, I think, where I think Mahrez will definitely be looking to link up with Erling Haaland a little bit more. The more those two play together, I think at the moment they've been on more holidays together than played games together, they will, they'll get that telepathic chemistry um, going, so that'll be, be good. Elsewhere in League A, well, we actually saw a few leagues kick off. We'll, we'll dive into those in a second. Um, nice, of course, first home game. Andy Delors, first goal of the season. We know he'll... I think Delors is guaranteed double figures in Liga. Um, I think it was a penalty, Delors' goal. Ultimately, Nice drew again. So that's two points from two games for Nice, but they're still sort of gelling their plays together. Yusuf Atal and Bilal Brahimi both came on as wingers. So we had a front three at one point of Bilal Brahimi on the left, Yusuf Atal playing as a right winger on the right with Andy Delors up front. Might see that in an Algeria setup one day soon, hopefully. I do like Bilal Brahimi a lot. But um, I have to say, I'm expecting Nice to pick up a lot more points than that with respect to Strasbourg. They should be beating them at home. But we'll let it off now. West Ham uh, playing in the Conference League this week. There's a few Conference League playoff rounds. We've seen already in European competitions this season Algeria's stance on the situation between Israel and, 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 Pal and Palestine. And, and Palestine. Um, we've seen players at clubs, refused to travel to Israel to play the Israeli club. So we saw Ahmed Touba at Bashak Shahir refused to, to travel um, to Israel for that game. We saw Lugano, we saw Mohamed Amora refused to travel to um, Israel for their, for their game. Um, of course, not every country decides to do this. We saw Ashraf Hakimi happily travel to play the French Super Cup for PSG. He played in Israel. Um, the Moroccan international. Algerians and, and, and Palestinians have always had 
in and outside of football in any walk of life, a fantastic bond relationship. I think the closest bond between any country with Palestine is, is with Algeria, in my opinion, from what I've seen, and, and even the football matches when Algeria invite the Palestinians over to play them. Now, it's all well and good, you know, we've even seen years ago, I remember Yassine Brahimi in a Champions League group game, didn't want to travel to, to Maccabee Tel Aviv because I don't think he wanted to, to, uh, to play there. But now Nice have got an Israeli team. And people say you shouldn't really mix the politics with the football. Well, we're talking about human lives here. We're talking about a situation. We see the Ukraine-Russia situation plastered all over the news. We see minute silences. We see flags. We see Russian clubs banned. Why are the, why are the Israeli clubs not banned? Why are they not banned? for committing human atrocities for years gone by. I, I don't understand why it's one rule for the Russians but not another rule for the, for the Israelis. Anyway, the point is, in terms of the Algerian football podcast, is Nice have got an Israeli club. Um, now, this means that they are going to have to travel to Israel. And we're not talking one Algerian at Nice. We're talking Yusuf Atal. We're talking Hisham Badawi. We're talking Bilal Brahimi. We're talking Teddy Bulhendi. We're talking, um, well, Andy Delore, of course. This is going to be a big play card now from Delore. If Delore goes to that game, Algerians are going to jump on his back. We, I think, you know, Delore has happily said he'll come back to play for Algeria. But if, if you see all the Algerian internationals not go and Delore goes, there's going to be, it's going to be awkward. It's going to be received badly, I think. Um... Of course, you've got players then, like the likes of um, Amin Gouri, who is, of course, Algerian descent but wants to play for France. What's his stance going to be? And how did Nice approach this? Because we're talking six, seven, eight players, potentially, that are not going to go. We're talking six, seven easily players that won't go. And it might cost Nice. It might cost them a place in the group stage of the Europa Conference League. Um... So I don't know how this is going to end. Of course, I think when they play the home game, you'll, you'll see them all in action. You'll see a few Algerians go to that game support Nice even more. But I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be an interesting situation. Um, I know, of course, not all of those players are, are fully fit, etc. Atal could easily say, oh, I'm injured, I can't go, etc., etc. But keep it. there's a story to keep an eye on because Nice are going to be missing a few players. But um, be for, sure to leave your, your comments in the comment section below if you uh, if you want to have your say on that take. Um, I think it's great that the players use their platform to support Palestine, but, you know, well, how are they going to approach it? I, for me personally, I think every Algerian player should not be going. I, I think if you have a stance, you all get behind it, because if half go and half don't, it just looks a bit dodgy. It looks like a sort of a, a personal thing, but this is a, a human rights thing. But, you know, elsewhere in, in Liga, anyway, um, Stade Brestois drew to Marseille in the late game. Now, Yusuf Bellaly didn't start, which disappointed a lot of people. Did come on in the second half. Got a point, but I thought Harris Budkubla had a fantastic game in the midfield. And maybe the pressures of seeing Yassin Adli, Hussam Awa, is going to up Harris Budkubla's game. Um, wasn't impressed when he played Sierra Leone, but he was on his own in there. I think he did very well in the two with Lise Malou um, against, against Marseille. So Budkubla was fantastic against a good midfield, the likes of Genduzi in there. He was very good. All the leagues have kicked off. What a start for Ismail Banassa. Um, I don't think Milan won the game, but he was very good in the middle. He, he was, you know, his passes take four or five players out of the game. So that was fantastic. Rashid Gazelle scored to make it 3-0 to Besiktas. And then they ended up drawing the game 3-3. I don't know how that's happened. So, unfortunately, Rashid Gazelle couldn't get the win in Turkey. But we're off the mark um, in, in, in football again, of course, it's starting early because of the World Cup, like we said at the top of the show, which we're not going to be in, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, that sort of wraps up this week's show. Um, thank you so much for listening or watching or whatever platform you're, uh, you're consuming this podcast on. Now we shall leave you with the quiz. I asked you a question last week. I said, which player did, uh, did not play their football club football in England at one point and of course the correct answer was Yassine Brahimi because Karim McMoore of course played for Huddersfield and Andy Delore played for Wigan funnily enough both at the time were not even in the Premier League they were in the Championship so Yassine Brahimi of course uh, Granada Porto and then off to these Qatari clubs which uh, which no one really cares about Adling Gudiora is back in, in Qatar he's at El Duhail um, he just seems to, what a weird journey, he was in Qatar, then he was at Sheffield United, Qatar, Burton Albion, Qatar, what's next? 
Tranmere, Exeter, I don't know, but the wonderful world of Adeline Gudiora never ceases to amaze us. So now it's time for this week's quiz. Of course, if, you, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to leave your quiz answers in the comments down below. So this is this week's question. Which of these players has not scored against Algeria? Is it A, Bruno Fernandes, B, Cristiano Ronaldo or C, Gonzalo Guedes? Which of these players has not scored against Algeria ever in their career? Is it Bruno, is it CR7 or is it Guedes who's just gone to Wolves in the Premier League? I'll let you know the answer next week. Have a great week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.